Hello everyone, my name is Alex and welcome to episode 28 of the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series where I play rapid games looking to get to 2000 D-Low. We are currently 1950, so not far off. And I'll talk you through my thought process while we play. And then in the post-game analysis, we can delve a bit deeper into some of the ideas of the game and make it easier for you guys to visualize what I'm calculating because I can actually play out the moves in the analysis board and also use the computer to help to like delve deeper into some ideas. Anyway, to avoid aborting the game, I am going to play my opening move, c6. And this is going to enter a Slav defense. So I was just grabbing my notebook out. And after c4, we're going to play d5 and enter the Slav. The reason I play the Slav is because I like the Karo Khan with the black pieces against 1e4. So I feel like if I play the Slav against 1d4 and 1c4, then I get a very similar game plan, which means that I don't have to study quite as much theory. And I think the Slav does offer some chances to have an interesting game, depending on how you play it. So the difference is that e4 isn't on the board, it's instead c4. So the plans are not exactly the same. We can play this in a typical Slav fashion, where you develop your light squared bishop and then lock the pawn chain with e6, which is similar to the Karo Khan. Or you can play it in a semi-Slav fashion, with e6 before the bishop comes out, and then you eventually may try to develop the bishop with something like b6 and bishop to b7. So my opponent plays bishop to g5, and you would assume he might be trying to take this knight. Now, we could play e6 so that we can take back the knight with the queen. We could play knight d7 to defend this knight, but then our bishop is kind of stuck. If we develop our bishop, there's a good chance he takes us. That isn't necessarily bad, but I don't really understand how to play those structures in all honesty. So I don't really want to walk into that because there's a good chance my opponent does understand that. One of the moves that's on my radar is knight to e4, attacking the bishop and the knight. Now the critical line is obviously knight takes and pawn takes. And yeah, you could argue that this e4 pawn is weak, but it's also not that easy for white to attack the pawn, and his bishop's a bit misplaced. The b2 square is a little bit vulnerable, as is this diagonal. So I'm actually going to play that. This may not be the best idea, but I think it's quite practical because it forces a decision from white. So he takes, we're going to take back, and as long as we can maintain this pawn, we should be good. Our opponent goes bishop to e3. Okay, is that theory? I don't know. Maybe his plan is to go f3. Or maybe he wants to go g3 and bishop to g2 to attack the pawn. But this seems like an odd move because he's just blocking his own development. e3 looked very, like pawn e3 looked very natural. Maybe it was a mouse slip. Maybe he meant to put his bishop onto f4. Don't know. But see, I would like to play e6 to go bishop to b4. But then he can just bring his bishop back here. Maybe he's trying to discourage me from going queen b6 because he can have discoveries with d5. Maybe he's trying to stop the move c5. I think, I think I'm just going to go bishop f5 to defend this pawn and get ready to play e6. Yeah, so he does play this. But the thing is, I'm not going to take him. If I take him, then he either takes with the knight or he takes with the pawn and he gets what he wants. But if I don't take and wait for him to take me, then he just loses a tempo, I believe. So we're going to go e6 and get this bishop ready for development. Queen b3, okay, he's now attacking this. How do we want to defend it? We could play queen b6. b5 takes, 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 takes. We win a pawn. If we go here, and I'm not sold on that, 
we could play queen to a5, and after bishop to d2, then go queen b6. That might be a better version. But I feel like his bishop wants to go to d2, because it's not very good on the e3 square, because it's blocking his pawn from going there. We could also play queen c7, just defending, leaving our options open to deliver this check at some point, just maintaining control of this diagonal. That looks like a very solid move. We're not committing to anything. Do I care if he plays a move like rook c1 to line my queen up? And then try and play a move like d5? Hmm, not sure. Queen c7, rook c1. Knight d7. d5. e d c d. Ah, but we can always throw in queen to a5 check. Okay, so I think that's good. Let me just note down. Move 9. Rook c1. Um, followed by... Knight d7. And d5. With queen a5 check. I think that gets us out of those problems. Okay, our opponent goes to g4. That is a very committal move. Because this diagonal is incredibly weak now. I don't see a reason not to drop the bishop back. This isn't really scary because he's not threatening f5 because we control that square. And if he does go here, he's just making it difficult for himself to develop. Okay. We could deliver this check, but bishop to f2. It seems very dubious from him. We could just play h5. Which I'm going to play. And if he takes, I'm probably going to take with the rook. So my bishop maintains defense. Our rook can also even swing over to the queen side at some point, potentially. But our rook is also in absolutely no danger on the, F, on the h5 square. And just applies pressure to the h5 pawn. Wow, he castles queenside. Did not see that coming. Honestly, that I didn't really consider that. This doesn't seem right, though. I mean, my bishop is going to be incredible if it opens up. If we take, take... Not convinced. He's really struggling to develop, though. Really struggling. But it's not that easy for us. Bishop e7 looks like a nice move to put pressure on h4. Also bishop d6 to maybe go bishop f4. I don't think I really want to trade the bishops though. So I'm going to go bishop e7. Because now we might be threatening to like take, take and take on h4. So he goes g5. Okay, so, now, is he thinking of going f4? Maybe. If we take him, knight takes, I don't see what we gain. Maybe this was good because it controlled that square. <laughs> Although if he does go f4, he still has some development problems, I think. And if he does this, we can always put our bishop on d6 next. And a move like knight h3, bishop f5, attacks the knight and makes it difficult for him to defend f4. So we could set that sort of trap. Let's just go knight d7. Let's develop. Our king has not committed himself anywhere. He now attacks our pawn. Logical move. I think we should probably take. We can take with the knight, but we do open up our bishop now. He takes with the bishop? So maybe he wants to do this with his knight? 
Okay. I feel like castling king's side is kind of obvious here. And our king's very safe because of the way that these pawns are frozen. Yeah, so he wants to bring his knight there, which is annoying. So we could play bishop d6 to control that square. We could also play the move e5. And if takes, knight takes. Bishop here. I don't think that's particularly scary. Is e5 a good idea? Do we want to open the center up right now? Hmm. Could play b5. Knight here. Take. Take. The problem is if we move our bishop then h5 falls here here and by the way if we go b5 and takes takes then this comes with a discovered check and the king is pretty much dead because our bishop cuts him off d5 is very very tempting b5 knight f4 takes queen takes don't know what the follow-up is So, bishop to d6. If he goes c5. Bishop g3. I don't want to take on h4. I just want to keep the bishop on the diagonal. But the bishop looks like he's going to get trapped. Hmm. c5? Knight here, take, 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 take. Mm, I don't like how weak e6 is. We're going to play b5. Oh, that doesn't look good. That's where the knight wanted to go, not the bishop. Not the bishop. Okay, I feel like this is a mistake. The move I kind of want to play is e5. And if here, then here, here, here. I think we're better with the bishop pair. And if e5 pawn takes, then we can take on c4. And if he tries to go e6, then we take, take, take. King d2, check, king here, now he escapes. We could just keep it simple though, and play like queen a5. Queen a5, c5, we could take, and if queen takes, then go queen a5, and he can't lock the structure. If we take, bishop takes, take, take. We damage the structure, yes, but I feel like our attack's gone. So. And maybe our idea is here, and then he wants to take here with this pin. So what about queen to c8? And if takes, then this comes with check. Queen here. We should be winning that pawn at the end of the line. e5 is tempting though. What was my problem with it? e5. Take, take, take. Oh, my queen struggles to move because the knight hangs. Got to be really accurate. It does feel like an inaccuracy, though. You know what? If we go queen here and he takes, I think I'm just going to take and give up the exchange. 
Yeah, I think I'm happy to sack the exchange here. Because this bishop is going to be so powerful. And if he trades off his light-squared bishop, how does he plan on contesting me? His idea should be to play e4 to block the diagonal off. But if he trades this bishop off... Takes that, really? And if we take on c4... Queen's under attack. If you go here, I'm not going to trade. I'm just going to take. Maybe? Here, here, here. Oh no, if you go um, queen c3, then I'm going to play bishop 2, b4 to cut the king's escape off. That'll be some crisscross applesauce stuff going on. He does have control of the b1 square with his bishop, but... Okay, he goes there. Now we could trade queens for sure. But we could go queen f5. Threatening ideas of mate, but queen f5, e4. Yeah, we run out of moves there. Okay, what if we do take? Take, take. Knight b6, bishop c2, take, take, knight d5. We definitely have an advantage in that endgame. Okay, so we can always bail out by taking, right? But is there anything better? Queen f5, he just goes e4. Can my queen go anywhere else useful? I don't think so. So we're just going to take. I don't think there's anything better. But now we get this. He goes here. Then we just go rook to um, c8. We can play bishop b7. And we can't put a rook on c7 or b8 to attack the bishop. But then we can just move it to d8. So that's fine. Here we just go here. We can't access these with these squares because it is bishop. We'll have to check some of these attacking lines afterwards with the engine. This is like a pretty equal position, but I feel like we have the advantage positionally. We go here, here, here. This is good for us. That looks good for us because if he wants to trade the bishop for the knight, we're very happy. E3, okay attack the bishop. Oh, he could go there, though. Ugh. Stupid move. Stupid move. I should have just played knight to d5. Yeah, idiot. I need to think a bit more. Why did I do that? Knight d5 was so much better. Yeah, now he gets e4, now knight d5 is no longer a move. Great. I feel like we should play this. If he takes me, it's good, but if he doesn't take me, I don't like it. Hmm. I think we should go for it though. Now I'd like to see him play e5. That's a move I'd love to see. Just shut his own bishop out. Give us the d5 square back. Oh yeah. Yes, that is high up on the list of moves we absolutely love to see. Thinking of bishop b4, does inducing a3 help us? No, I don't think so. Let's just go back to e7. Now I'm a bit happier. I'm a bit happier here. Our bishop is now amazing again. And d4 is kind of weak. And we're going to put something on d5. OK. 
Okay. Maybe he's trying to put something there, but if we go knight to d5, then we block the bishop's connection off. And if he takes us, he's going to give us the bishop pair. We could take with the pawn, but I feel like taking with the rook is better. So then we can also swing over at some point. And we could double up. I also don't want to give the option of like e6. Maybe taking with the pawn was a bit better, but I I like rook takes. It feels more natural. And we are going to put some big pressure on the queen side, is the plan. His pawn could get quite weak. And if he has to play a move like bishop e3 to defend it, that's very passive. This knight doesn't have an obvious route because we control a lot of its forward movement. And if he goes back to h3, then that's literally where he came from. What might be smart is to try and rotate the knight through um, d1 to c3 to blockade the pawn, although that is a good move. However, however, what if we go here? Or better yet, what if we go rook fd8 first, force bishop e3, then play rook a5, forcing a3, and then go c3 to break apart the structure? That looks beautiful. Let's do it. So bishop e3 should be the only move because this rook can't come to d3 for obvious reasons. He's going to sack the pawn. What? Why? Here, does he want this? Then we can just take on h4. Or... Here, 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 here. We could just go like this and this. And trap the rook. That looks stupid to me. That looks really... Yeah, what? If that... Is that, is that your plan? Okay, what about this? And then here, and then we take here with check. And we have like three passed pawn or two passed pawns. Maybe he wants to try and beat us in the race. It's, but we are up two pawns, and his king is pretty vulnerable. Not a safe looking king at all. Do you have to be accurate though? Do you have to be accurate? I kind of like the idea of bishop d8, bishop a5 to block the pawn's advancement. His knight is still dominated, by the way. Let's do it. My idea is a4, bishop a5, move like rook a3, and then we can move our rook and push our h pawn. As long as we can stop this pawn from moving. Okay, goes for this. Fair, fair. I guess our moves aren't that easy. His bishop controls some key squares as well. He does have good control over h3. Could go bishop c7 to attack this. Because he's not actually threatening my c4 pawn and he's not threatening to push and we get our bishop off the back rank where it could be vulnerable to pins i know it looks a bit greedy what we're doing but it also seems like the best plan for me right now yeah but he's not threatening this pawn if here and then there playing on the pin take there 
there? That looks winning. Wait, 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 wait. Bishop e5. b3. Take. If he takes here, then we just trade, right? So if he takes our rook. If we take on a2, then rook b4. If we push, then rook b4. Promote. Rook takes, bishop takes. That should be winning. That should be winning. Also, if b3, we do have bishop to d4. Attacking the rook and the bishop. Mm, but... What about this? No, that doesn't work. Take there. Take there. Promote. Oh no, that that's completely winning, right? That's completely winning. If he takes us, we just take on a2 and he can't stop a1 promotion. The only piece he can use is his rook. And then we're just up four clean pawns. <laughs> yeah. Wait, he can go here, but then we just take it. And if rook takes, then we promote with check. And we win the rook anyway. Yeah, so he does that. Promote. And now we're just up four pawns. And we have the bishop pair against a knight and bishop. This should be a fairly easy cleanup. Whew, what a game. That was incredibly cool. That was a good game. Um, okay, let's just... He's not resigning, which is kind of annoying, to be honest. Let's go... Bishop f5 setting up the domination of the knight's forward movement just to make this difficult for him okay and now we're gonna play bishop to d4 now he's given us that square by moving off of the diagonal to attack the knight remember the knight can't move forward so the knight moves backward the knight can't approach because our bishop dominates so we can play bishop to g4 to attack the knight the knight moves. This is an opposite coloured bishop endgame. I mean, we are up four pawns, so it's still completely winning. But we're just going to push. We're just going to push. His knight can't move. His king also can't approach my bishop because we cover all of these squares. Okay, now we can just play this. Then he can go here and get into another opposite coloured bishop situation. Like I said, it's still completely winning, but I don't want to allow it. Just for the sake of simplicity. Let's do this. I want to go here, but I didn't want to play here and allow the king into f4. Again, it probably doesn't matter. But for the sake of simplicity yet again. Okay, now we could take. I think I'm not going to, though. I'm instead going to play f6 to lock this bishop out of the game. And now I'm going to take... Wait. Actually, no. g4. g4 forces the king off of the defense of the knight. And now we just win the knight for free. Deflection tactic. Take. By the way, our opponent has more time than he started with. Bro, use your time. Like, if you're completely winning, then sure, you don't need to think that much. But he didn't think all game. He played every move so quickly. The most he spent was 30 seconds. Like, come on. If you're going to play rapid, then use your time. If you don't want to play rapid, that's cool. Like, play blitz. He's going for some kind of stalemate. But there is no stalemate. The king has to d2 square at all times. He still has a bishop as well, so... This game over. It's actually kind of annoying that he just did not use his time. It genuinely kind of annoys me. Because there's no need for him to have played that quickly. Certainly not a perfect game by any means. But a game I am happy with nonetheless. I thought that the technique used 
was quite good. Although I maybe could have got more out of the attack. The opening was very strange, though. Very strange. I'll see what the computer has to say about it. Let's get into the analysis. All right, just before we jump into the game review, if you enjoyed the video and you are still with us, then if you haven't already, please drop a like and subscribe because it would really support the channel. And if you're like half an hour in, you're probably enjoying the video. At least I would hope. Anyway, game review. I had 82.8% accuracy and my opponent with 72.1%. Fairly complicated game though, so kind of the accuracies you'd expect. You can't see the graph, but the um you know you know the graph you get in the game review where it shows like who had the advantage at different times in the game. It's basically in my favor the entire time, but every now and again it jumps back up to a roundabout equality. So essentially, I had an advantage most of the game, but I let it slip at a fair few moments. Anyway, it was, you know, a strange opening, so that's kind of um, what you'd expect. D4, C6. The reason I play C6 instead of D5 first is, one, I can avoid some theory by not playing D5, I feel like. And I'm also inviting the move E4, because then D5 just switches straight back into a Karo. And seeing e4 in response to c6 is actually quite common. I spoke with um, one of my mates at my chess club. He's rated about 2200, like over the board. And he was saying that playing c6 on the first move is quite good because a lot of the people consider c6 to be bad because it allows you to go into a caro. But that's exactly what I want. So anyway, my opponent doesn't do that. But if, if you try and play the Slav, but play c6 on move 1, there is a good chance people will transpose to the Karo Khan. My opponent goes c4, I go d5. We have knight to c3. Here you can take on c4, but personally I don't understand the theory. There's like e4, b5, and you try and hold on to this pawn. And c6 is a viable move because it supports the b5 pawn, which supports the c4 pawn. But I don't like pawn grabbing like this. I'd rather just develop. So knight f6, bishop g5. And I thought this was odd. Here again the computer wants me to take on c4. But like I said, I don't like playing in that style. So I instead go knight to e4. And the problem is for white. Is that his bishop's under attack. So he kind of has to take. By the way, the computer's suggesting c takes d5. Knight takes g5 and h4, which actually traps the knight because the knight can no longer go back to e6. So knight e4, knight e4, cd5, knight c3, knight c6, which is funny. Black has the bishop pair. It's kind of an equal position, really. But personally, I would take this with the black side. Instead, though, he takes and we take back. And white needs to try and claim that this is a weak pawn. He goes bishop e3. Like, we weren't even making him move. This bishop is pinning the pawn to the queen. Like, why are you voluntarily going back to e3 of all places? Going back to f4 might make a bit more sense. Apparently this is bad because of this? Why? Apparently this is just good for black. Okay, so maybe the reason he went bishop e3 was to stop my queen from coming to b6, which I think I alluded to in the game. But we play bishop f5. I don't know why it's giving that an inaccuracy. And my opponent goes f3, which is strange. Now, if I take this pawn, that's definitely a mistake on my part. Because then he takes with the knight. His development, yeah, the bishop's struggling to get out because his bishop's in the way. But it's a comfortable enough position for my opponent. The thing is though, I don't have to take. Now e5 is a move here, and I did consider the move e5 because it felt like it was in the spirit of the position. But I wasn't sure what to do after d takes e5. Apparently you just go knight d7 and say that I'm going to win this pawn. And if f4, then okay, g5, like what is going on at this point? What is even going on? Black is apparently much, much better. And I think the point is that c4 is under some serious fire. 
And if you go b3, then this is devastating. Okay, that's incredibly deep. I will keep that in mind in the future. But e6 is a little bit inaccurate because it's not quite as forcing as e5 is. Still, it's a good move, right? This is very strange opening territory, so you can't really, like, judge too harshly either player for not navigating this properly. Because it's just an incredibly weird opening. Again, if my opponent ever takes on e4, I can play queen h4. And if bishop f2, then there's bishop b4. So if g3 is played, then queen e4, knight f... Oh, no, you can't go knight f3 to defend the rook. What can you play? I'll do this. Okay. But I don't even have to play queen h4. I can just take with the bishop. And my bishop is kind of unassailable. Because this bishop struggles to actually like contest mine he'd have to play like bishop e3 sorry bishop f2 e3 and bishop d3 and that would just hang the g2 pawn anyway so my bishop is very strong in this particular variation which is why he doesn't take he goes queen b3 here i go queen c7 which is apparently a bit of an inaccuracy my computer wants bishop e7 and if queen b7 then you just ignore him and you castle and say that he's not developed. Yeah, it's a viable way to play, for sure. Like, he's up two pawns, but he can't develop. And this whole left free thing is really not helping his cause, especially with how weak this diagonal is. And, like, the b2 pawn, potentially the c4 pawn. Maybe even the king side in some scenarios. Black just has so much development. But queen c7 I don't think is a bad move. And my opponent goes g4. Bishop g6. The computer doesn't mind this. But h4, h5. You should go h5 rather than h6 in my opinion. Because h6 doesn't force anything. Right? And your opponent kind of has an extra tempo. Whereas h5 he has to do something. Well... Not immediately. For now he can castle and taking is no good. Because black, white is potentially going to play h5 here. But after castles and bishop e7. Apparently a5 looking for a4 was better. Here he does actually have to do something. Because if he plays a move like, I don't know, a3. Then we could take on g4. And after he takes back we can win the h4 pawn. You could argue this weakens my king, but if I just shuffle my king over, I should be good, right? Or even castle queenside if I really want. So, bishop e7, my opponent goes g5, which is a mistake apparently. And c5 is the best move here. Now, I considered this later on in the game. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do after he takes, though. So I don't really want to trade bishops. Apparently knight d7... And then I try and take with the knight. This is kind of what I did anyway with knight d7. Oh, I think maybe the difference is here if he pushes, take, rook take. Then the knight's better placed on c6. Ah, okay. So you want him to you want him to commit what he's gonna do with his d-pawn before you develop the knight, because if he pushes. Then you want to trade and then put the knight on c6 rather than d7 so the knight can access the weak dark squares. Especially b5 in conjunction with this bishop, right? And you've got potential um, pressure on a3. But the difference is, if black, if white takes, then you don't want the knight on c6. You want the knight on d7. But you don't know what white's going to do. If, like, you, you, you need white to commit his pawn before you move the knight. Rather than committing the knight first. Because then c5 isn't quite as good because he can push. And the knight then can't come to c6 to get into the position. That's very instructive. This is why. This is why I like computer analysis. Because at base level it says knight d7 bad, c5 good. And you're like, what? Why? But you just have to delve into it a little bit. And then you realise, ah... He needs to commit the pawn first before you know where to put the knight. Now c5 isn't quite as good, 
Um, well, it is still a move, but it's not quite as good because d5, and after we take and rook takes, I can't go knight c6. I like that. I really do like that intricacy. That's pretty cool. But anyway, bishop g2, we take. I did consider... I don't know whether I consider c5 in this position, but I took because um, I felt like e4 was under a lot of pressure. Apparently I can just give it up and go c5, then d5, ed. If you take with this pawn, my bishop is amazing. So if rook takes, what, b5? If queen takes, then I assume... Okay, not even rook b8, but knight e5. This is some weird computer line. I'm not even going to consider this. This is some strange computer line. Um, I think ef3 was a good idea. But bishop takes was confusing. Like, I understand this. But why not just develop your knight and look at the e5 square? This is what I was expecting. Bishop takes, though. Castle, knight h3. Here I considered bishop d6 to try and control the f4 square, but I wasn't sure about c5. I had calculated bishop g3, but then moves like rook h to g1, and I do not want to take on h4. This just looks kind of scary. And it's something like this. Apparently I'm fine, but my queen is tied down to the defense of the bishop, and I don't like that. I don't like the fact that my queen is immobile just to defend the bishop. So instead, we went for b5. And the idea is, if you take, then cb5, it's a discovered attack on the king. The king can't go to b1 because of my bishop. You can try and block with queen c3, but then we just continue the attack. And taking isn't all that good because bishop b4 is mate. So... White is under some serious pressure here. And if he goes for king to d2, then again, we just cut off the escape. If you go queen c3, then bishop to b4 will win the queen. So if the king goes back, then rook a c8. And again, you're just going to have to give up the queen. So, after b5, white's best move is knight f4, which is what I was calculating. And then bc, queen takes... Bishop f5 giving up the h5 pawn, but you get a pretty nice attack. Maybe I would have gone for this. My opponent, though, went for bishop to f4, which is a blunder, and I played queen a5, but the funny thing is, e5 is the best move, and I did calculate this, but I wasn't convinced. Now, after bishop takes, knight takes, pawn takes, bc... Queen C and Rook A B8. I did calculate up to this position, and I thought this was good for me. But my issue was pawn takes, and then B C Queen C, Knight B6. I didn't see my breakthrough. However, I had missed that in this position I can play Knight to B. No, not knight b6, sorry. I can play knight to c5, and e6 doesn't work because I take on b3 with check. And after the queen moves, now queen a5 is a lot stronger getting out of this discovery because a2 hangs. And if you play a move like a3, now I can play moves like b4, I can take, I can play queen a4 looking for knight to b3. This is a disaster for white. But I did not spot this knight c5 move, which is why I rejected it. And although I could be angry with myself for this, I don't mind it because I correctly evaluated that this wasn't that good for me. Because here knight b6, you have e6, and if I take on c4, then you take on c7. And this isn't that good. Because the difference between the queen being on c4 and b3 is that if I take on b3, it comes with check. If I take on c4, then it doesn't come with check, and he can take my queen, right? So that is why I chose queen to a5, which is an okay move. Queen c8 is also good, which I did briefly look at. Queen a5 isn't amazing, though, because...
because of bishop c6, take on c4, and every single move here is winning for black, except for queen a4, which is what I missed. And I think the reason I missed it is because in my head, my pawn covers that square. Obviously, when you take on c4, the pawn no longer covers that square. But this is a common thing when you're calculating, is your brain is just like, oh, that square, you can't go there. Because you're looking into the future, it's kind of difficult from a distance to notice that this square is now available, because the bishop also helps to defend that. And my pawn is no longer attacking it. So my opponent finds the move, queen a4. And by the way, if you play a move like queen takes c4, then rook a c8, this is completely game over. Like, the king can't move, the bishop can't move, the queen can't move. I mean, you're completely stuck, right? And I'm, my attack's going to come through. A2 could be hanging in some scenarios. I mean, you can just resign on the spot. And if the queen doesn't take and plays, I mean, it's difficult to find another move, to be honest. If you go like queen b5, then I'm just going to take on a2. And I have loads and loads of attacking ideas. If you try and take my rook, c3 is winning. I'm trying to get this bishop in or something. But my whole idea was, if um, here, here, like... If the bishop ever takes here, I'm kind of happy because I believed that my attack would still work because of how strong my bishop was. And that was a correct evaluation. But like I say, I just missed queen a4. And here I have to take. I wanted to play queen f5. Everything here is winning for black except for the move e4. And after queen g4, I mean, why can't just take this? The computer says it's a draw after c3, but I mean... I'm not confident I could draw this with black whatsoever. I don't understand how this is a draw, to be honest. So, queen a4, I took it, which I think is the most practical move. I don't know why the computer calls this a mistake, because it is literally the computer's favourite move. <laughs> Stockfish things, right? So we trade, knight b6, best move. Bishop c6, rook a c8, bishop b7 which is losing to c3 and if you take then rook takes and if you take then take and here and bishop b4 and your king cannot escape a discovered attack from the bishop because my rook cuts everything else off and if you go to e1 then rook h3 with check and if you don't take and you play like, well, you can't actually move as white. Rook d g1. Bishop b4. Rook g3. These are the top computer moves, by the way. Knight a4. B c. Knight takes. King b2. Knight e2. This is crazy. Okay, well, the computer says bishop c6 is a mistake because of that variation, but no way either of us sees that. So, in reality, it's actually quite a good move. Again, this is a mistake because I missed the move c3, which is just wild. e3, and again, yeah, knight d5 is the move here. Again, c3 is, is a move, and if you take, then knight c4. For, that's a very nice positional sacrifice to gain this square. And the king literally cannot move again. Bishop 2, a3 is mate. e4 is the only move. Bishop a3, king c2. What? Knight a5? Uh, what? Oh, and then you win e4. Okay, yeah. So I c3, I don't know if I would have found. Knight d5, though, I definitely should have found. I didn't know. I played rook d7, which annoyed me, because after bishop c6, all I can do is retreat. But it's still alright, because white still doesn't really have all that many moves. If he goes e4 now, again c3, and if you take, ah, then you skewer. Okay, that's interesting. But after e4, yeah, c3 is the move. I went bishop d6. 
and I was hoping he would either take or play e5, and he played e5. If he takes, that's also good for me, because d4 is quite weak, e4 is quite weak, it's quite good for me. The thing is, white doesn't have to do anything. I'm not threatening anything. He can just play a move like rook hf1, and if I take him, then knight f4 and white is better, so I'm never going to take him. I don't have all that many moves, to be honest. Again, the computer wants c3, knight c8, bishop h7. It's a difficult position. But my opponent played e5. Again, I want him to either take me or play e5. And he played e5. And those two are the most likely moves that someone plays. Especially considering he spent literally 10 seconds on this move. So his time doesn't change, but remember you get plus 10 seconds after every move. So he spent 10 seconds. Which, by the way, bro, spend some more time, please. But the most natural moves are to attack my bishop or to take my bishop because they're the most forceful, even though they're not the best. So he went e5, and this is great for me because I can just drop my bishop back and go, yo, look at this hole. And look at this bishop. And look at your bishop. And look at your knight. They're not good. He goes knight f2. And here, if I play a move like a5, for example... Then bishop e4, he trades off my best piece. I'm still a bit better, but white has some decent chances here. I win knight d5, and he took. Apparently knight d5 isn't that good, but my point here was, is, was to cut off the bishop's connection to e4, so he can't trade bishops. Apparently bishop d2? I still take this with black every day of the week, though. c3 is a big threat. Because if you take like this, then that's mate. And if you take like this, takes, takes, rook c8, and I win this pawn. And there's a lot of pressure with these bishops and this rook. So I consider knight d5 a good move, even if the computer doesn't. Because again, the computer is fixated on c3. Maybe I should have seen that, but because I missed that idea, every move that I play where the computer's like, no, that's bad because you didn't play c3, I'm not that critical because, again, I just missed the idea of c3. By the way, let me show you the analysis bar. Sorry, I forgot to change the layout so the analysis bar is visible. My bad. Hope that wasn't too annoying. Uh, so knight d5, he took, we took. It's better to take with the rook than the pawn. Because here, I don't have that much activity. And d4 is no longer a weakness because I can't access it with my rooks. So rook takes is definitely better. We also leave the option to swing the rook over. Rook h3 is a mistake, which was just an odd move. I didn't really understand that. But there aren't all that many moves. Apparently rook d... bishop d2 is the best. And if you take, then bishop e3... Take, take. Ah, okay, and you've got an attack on the pawn and your threatening rook here. C3 again. <laughs> Trying to do rook C8. Makes sense. But he goes rook H3, and we capitalize with rook FD8 because it, you can't defend this very easily. The only move is bishop E3, which is what I was expecting. And my plan was rook A5. The king can't move over to defend the pawn, so this forces a3, and then c3. Finally going c3. I'm sure I mentioned this in the game. This was my idea. I thought this was forced. And after you take, then we take on a3, and then it's really difficult to defend. King d2. We actually have a passed a pawn if we would just want to push it. We can also just play moves like rook to b8, trying to infiltrate the second rank and win the c pawn. Very, very difficult for white to play. Again, the computer just wants to give this pawn up. It's that bad of a position. So, we double up and he goes rook c3. We take. Um, I wasn't really expecting him to take. I thought he might try bishop e3. But again, we can just take on h4. And if he trades and takes like this, we get very similar position to the game. Bishop takes g5, king d1. Uh, bishop back to d8, it really liked my move. Not in this exact position, but it liked my idea of the bishop swinging back. Probably to access the a5 square. So if like a4, bishop a5. 
Computer approves. I'm very happy with that. Again, that wasn't the position we got though. Rook d4, rook d4, bishop e3, rook h4, bishop a7, bishop g5 check, king d1, and yeah, bishop d8 is the best move. So yeah, it, it likes it in this position as well. It's basically the same. In fact, it might be... It's exactly the same, just a different move order. Yeah, okay then. <laughs> Sorry, that makes sense. But the, the, the problem is, if I play like a different move, well, there's not that many moves. Because, yeah, white can't move, but I also can't really move. Like, bishop f5, if I play a move like that, my opponent can start advancing, or maybe even play a move like bishop b6 to stop this and control the a5 square. And now things start to get a little bit dangerous. So, that's why I played bishop d8 to control this square. And if you go a4, then I'm going to play bishop a5. Rook a3 looks like the most natural move. And now my bishop is kind of freezing your rook. And c4 is no longer under attack, so my rook has a bit more movement. I can play like rook f4, start to push this pawn, play bishop f5 to support the pawn push. This looks quite good. My opponent goes rook a3, which stops bishop a5, but it also stops his own pawn from pushing. So I went bishop c7, which is the best move, because what are you doing about this pawn? You can't defend it. The rook can't defend. The knight can't defend. The bishop can't defend. And the rook can't... Well, the rook could go to e3, actually. But rook f4, the knight's under attack. Because the rook is blocking the bishop's connection to the knight. King e2. And then my h-pawn kind of goes down the board. Bishop h5 is on the way. He chooses rook a4, which is just odd. We take b3. And I mean, I get the point. But cb3. That's the problem. And after rook h4... I can play b2, which I calculated, but we kind of have the same idea as if I take on a2, except if I take on a2, I'm up like another pawn, right, which is what we did in the game. Apparently, bishop c2 is stronger. If the king goes to c1, then we take here. Oh, we can't play rook a4 because my bishop controls here, and the king still can't approach. So if you take here, then we queen. That's very cool. I didn't notice that. But I was also low on time, and this was a very easy and obvious plan. Rook a4, we queen, takes, takes. Now, of course, we didn't have to sack the rook after b3. There are other options. We can play a move like bishop f5. If you take us, this pawn can't advance anyway because his rook is hanging. Now we can just push our pawns if we want. Instead of bishop f5, I mean there's other moves. But if bishop f5 and rook takes, then we can trade rooks. And again, we can just continue pushing. But I thought playing cb3 was the easiest way to go about it. You don't have to take my rook. You can take like this. But here I can just exchange rooks. You have one passed pawn. I have four passed pawns which are all connected. Bishop c7 stops the pawn from moving, and it's game over, in all reality. So we go into this line, I win the rook, we're up four pawns. I think I could go into a bit more analysis on the conversion of the end game, but I think it's quite self-explanatory. Dominate the knight, trade off the knight, and just win because I'm up four whole pawns. But I did cover a lot of it in the game. Here I can play bishop b4 check, but... After king d2, I can take the knight, of course, but I didn't like king d3 because I didn't want to take here now, because after he takes on d4, yes, I'm up four pawns, but it's opposite colored bishops. Why allow it? I know it's not a draw, but it makes it a little bit harder if you can set up some kind of blockade on the dark squares. It gives me more of a chance to go wrong. So instead, we just push king f3, e5, knight f2, f6, and after knight e4, this just blunders g4, we win the knight, we can play a few more moves, but this is just game over, easy checkmate, 
And that is the end of the video, right on the hour mark. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.